So in a few of my videos, you've heard me talk about my home directory problem. In fact, I've made several videos specifically about my home directory and the mess that it's in. I've talked about how it's a pet peeve of mine that developers constantly take configuration files that are supposed to be in .config and put them in the home directory just because they can. It drives me absolutely bonkers. And as you guys have probably seen in recent videos, my home directory looks like this. It's absolutely insane. I've given up on this problem. Now you can use tools like XGG Ninja, which I've made a video about that will help you move things that can be moved. But the problem is, is that not everything can be moved and you have to do a good job of staying on top of it. Because every time you install something new, chances are that program is going to shove something in the home directory. It's going to drive you nuts if you care at all. Now, a lot of people just don't care about this problem. They don't look at their home directory or they don't have the hidden files feature in their favorite GUI file manager turned on. So most of that stuff is out of sight, out of mind. They just never see it. But for me, I spend the vast majority of my time when I'm dealing with the terminal or in file managers in the home directory. That's where I am most of the time because it's the home directory and I always have the hidden files turned on in GUI file managers and I and when I do an LS in the terminal it shows me everything of course right so I see those dot files dot files all the time and it bugs me so I have just kind of given up on this problem at least until yesterday so the other day in one of my videos a commenter and I, I I'm sorry I forgot your name as I told you that I would forget your name, I'm sorry, told me what they did for this problem. And it was pure brilliance. Like seriously, I feel so stupid for not coming up with this that it's shameful. But the idea here is, like I said, shockingly simple. It's just, just use a different home directory. Let all the developers do whatever they want with the dedicated default home directory, but create yourself a directory that you consider home, set it as your home for the things that you deal with the most, and then just treat that as your home directory, allowing the other one to fill up with as much cruft as, you, as developers want to fill it up with. You never have to deal with it, or at least you don't have to deal with it nearly as often. All that stuff really is, it's kind of the equivalent of putting newspaper over the spilled milk the problem's still there, but you're really, really never going to see it if you treat this new directory as your home directory. So that's what I've done. I've been messing around with it now for over a day, and I've got it mostly set up the way that I like it. So I'm going to walk you guys through what I've done here and see, show, kind of show you how it works. And I'll talk about some pros and cons of doing this, because there are some downsides to this. It's not necessarily something you're always going to want to do on every computer that you own. It, it, it does require some workarounds. Let's just put it that way. So t let's go ahead and talk about what I've done to fix my home directory problem. Before I do, if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really helps the channel. So let's go ahead and take a look at my desktop again. And like I said, this is my traditional home directory, the one that is installed with OpenSUSE when I installed it. And I've been using OpenSUSE now for 195 days. I'm coming up on 200 days. I I'm working through my two-year challenge i'm still very ha happy with OpenSUSE, but in 195 days as you can see with my home directory it's, it's developed quite a bit of cruft there's a lot of stuff in there some of it i could get rid of and delete because of either it's for for applications that i don't use or have long since uninstalled so i could do some cleaning and clean this up just a little bit but i won't be able to get rid of all of it so what i've done is i've actually created my own home directory. I call it mHome. Now, this is the first kind of tip that I'd give you if you're going to do this. Call your directory something other than home because you already have a home directory. Now, you can, I believe, call your new home directory just home because the paths are going to work fine, but it might be confusing somewhere down the line. So I named it something a little bit different, just called it mHome for Matt Home, and that was fine for me. Like I said, it might get confusing if you name them both home. So 
Uh, another thing before I continue on I, that I should mention is that you can, via environment variable, actually change where Linux thinks your home directory is. That's not what we're doing here, and there's a reason why. If you were to use that environment variable to set your home into a different place, basically what Linux is going to do is just treat, treat that new place as your home directory. So you're not actually solving the problem. Every time you install something, stuff's going to get shoved into that new home directory. You're going to have the exact same problem, just in a different location. So what I'm talking about here is that we're actually bypassing that. We're, we're keeping the default home set as it is, just like you would on any Linux distribution, but we're creating a different directory that we're going to treat as home. So if I do an ls here, you'll actually see that it's a much cleaner experience. All I have is the regular directories that I would have in a very low key home directory. And I'm going to move some more stuff in here. I'm just kind of testing the waters, just want to make sure everything's working. And I st some of the changes that I want to make are going to require a little bit more work. And I'll talk about that here in a minute. But as a start, this is obviously much more clean than what you'd ex you know than I, what I showed you earlier, right? So all I have right now is what, six or seven directories in there, no hidden files whatsoever, and it is pristine. Now, obviously, there's more to this than just creating a new directory and moving all of your XDG DIRs into that directory. It's more complicated than that. So once you've created your new home and moved all of the directories you want to move to it, you'll want to make sure that Linux knows that's where those directories are, specifically the ones that fall under the XDG DIRs classifications. So things like desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, videos, and template. Those are the, I think that's seven different directories, you'll want to make sure you tell Linux exactly where those the new location of those directories are. Otherwise, it's just going to create them again the next time you boot up in your real home directory. So you go into your .config file and you'll see a directory that is called userdirs.dirs. So you're going to vim into that like so. And this is what this directory or file looks like. And basically what you want to do here is change the location path for all of these different directories. So you want to make sure your desktop directory is in your new home directory, your, your download directory is in your, in your new home directory, and so on and so forth. This way, when you go into a file manager that has or respects XDG, XDG DIRs, and you click downloads, it'll take you to the proper download folder. It's not just going to create a new one in your default home directory. So by setting this, you're ensuring that Linux uses the new location for these specific directories, which is precisely what you want to do. Now, that's just the first step. And the, this, is our, this is right here is the most important step, probably, because if you don't do this, it's going to continue to try to use the old paths for these directories. So that's the most important step. Another one that you'll want to do is set an alias. So if you go into your bash RC or your ZSHRC or your fish alias, wherever the hell they store those things, I don't even know. I, I didn't use fish for very long, so I don't remember anything about fish. But anyways, you go wherever you set aliases in. So it's usually your bash, your ZSHRC, and you want to set a alias that looks like this here. So alias CD to CD, and then the path to your new home directory. That way, when you press CD, it's actually going to take you to your new home directory and not to your default home directory like it would traditionally do. So this way, you're always going to be able to have your new home directory as your home. So that will prevent you from accidentally CDing into your default directory when you meant to go into your new home directory. Now this does present one very large pitfall. If you are going to set this alias, anything that you need to CD into, you're going to need to do so with a trick. So if I were to go CD into tilde slash dot config, like so, I'm going to get an error. CD, too many arguments. What's going on there? Well, I have an alias. And it's basically, this is the equivalent of CD my new home directory and then dot config. It's actually trying to CD into two directories at the same time. And that obviously does not work. That's not the way CD actually works. So what you're going to need to do here is actually use an escape hatch. So you want to do a backslash and then the command that you want to do, in this case CD, that's going to bypass the alias and then you can CD into dot config and that'll take you into dot config. So this is one of the pitfalls that you're going to discover if you're going to do this is that you have to do this every time you want to use CD. It's a mess. Now, what you could do and what I'm thinking about doing is just making it so that when I want to go home, I have a different command. So I like if I did a, like a, a GH 
command or gh alias, I could make that my new CD and use that every time I want to go home and then just leave CD alone. I, I would just use CD to go into specific directories instead of the home directory. And if I wanted to go home, which would be my new home, I'd use GH. So that's that's one workaround you could get by. That way you wouldn't have to use the escape hatch in order to actually use CD every time you wanted to use CD. So just to keep that in mind if that's if you end up doing this like I am. Another kind of weird thing that you're going to have to do is because a lot of stuff is still going to reside in your home directory. So if we do an LS here in my actual home directory, like my default home directory, there's still a lot of stuff here. And unfortunately, I'm still going to be able to have to get to this stuff. And because I'm not going to be spending much time in this directory here, most of the time I'm going to have to provide it a different path than normal. So usually what I'd want to do if I'm going to CD into dot config, I need and I'm at and I'm at home. So if I go if I go to my new home and I want to CD into dot config, that's what what I would normally type, right? Because I'm usually in the home directory, but because I'm not in the default home directory, this command doesn't actually work unless I were to move dot config to my new home directory, which I haven't done. But so what I'm going to actually have to get used to doing is no matter where I'm at, providing the actual path. So I'm going to have to do this. And again, I'm going to have to have that escape hatch if I want the CD to actually work. So there are some kind of downsides to doing this. It's going to require some retraining of your muscle memory if you're going to do this and you're going to have to, to perform some workarounds in order to make this actually work for you. And I've only been using this for a day, so there actually may be more workarounds that I'm going to need to do if I'm going to do this long term, right? So over time, I may discover that there's something that really doesn't work this way and I'm going to have to kind of adapt as that goes along. But over the course of the last day, I haven't discovered anything that's like a deal breaker. Mostly, it's just the matter of making sure that I'm CDing into the right directory. So always paying attention where I'm at and ensuring that I'm not deleting or moving things that I don't want to delete or move, which I do anyways for the most part. So it's not that big a deal. So there's another couple things that I want to do. So first is going to be messing around with my GUI file manager. So this right here is Crusader. And Crusader is obviously the best file manager. I don't want to hear any arguments against it. It's the best, it's at the absolute best file manager that has ever existed. And what I want to do next that I haven't figured out how to do quite yet is to make sure to set Crusader to always treat my new home directory as the home directory, or at least as the default directory. I haven't figured out how to do that yet because I've gone through the settings and it doesn't appear that that's actually in there. Almost certainly somewhere along the line, I can do that. I just don't know where yet. There's so many settings that I have to kind of troll through them. But the idea here is that if I were to press ho the home key here, it wouldn't actually take me to home. It would take me to my new home. Now, if I can't do that, what I can do is set a favorite to my new home directory and just keep that up here with the rest of my favorites. And that would be fine, right? Uh, it's not necessarily what I want to do, but I could do that that way if I needed to. Now, a lot of other file managers, that, which are not as good as Crusader, obviously, uh, do have the ability to have things pinned to a sidebar, or, or they're called favorites. So Crusader has favorites, but they're kind of buried in a menu for a lot of different file managers. So if I were to open up Thunar, along the side here, I have a whole bunch of things that say places. So so if I wanted to, I could right click on this, click send to, and then hit side pane. It would actually add my new home directory to the side panel over here so I could easily get to it, right? And a lot, almost every GUI file manager has something like that. Some of them lets you put it in their actual places. Some of them call them just bookmarks. It really does depend on what, you're, what file manager you're actually using. So another thing that I want to do actually is set the location of .config. So this is going to be a two-pronged effort. And the reason why I haven't done it yet is because it's going to be quite tedious to do. Because first off, I have a whole bunch of, if I do an LS here, you'll see that I have actually have a whole bunch of sim links to this directory or into this directory. So I have, you know, like i3s here, PyCom, Xmonads here, which I'm using right now, Qtal, Ranger, a whole, a whole bunch of stuff. And if I were to do move my .config to my new home directory, all those sim links would probably be broken somewhere along the line. Almost definitely something would go way bonkers and I'd be an unhappy camper. So I'm going to have to change all of those to make sure that they're properly linked. Another thing that I'll need to do is actually set the 
proper environment variable to change my the location of dot config. So there is a an environment variable that you can set that will tell Linux where your dot configuration file is. That way, when you install a new application and the developer of that application has properly done things and they want to store files in your dot configuration directory, they can know where that particular configuration file actually is or that configuration directory actually is. So you set this environment variable, it'll tell Linux where your dot config actually is. It doesn't have to be in your traditional home directory. You can put it wherever you want. So that's another thing that I'm going to do eventually. Like I said, it's going to take a little bit of time to make sure that everything stays up and running the where it's supposed to be supposed to also as you can see my dot config here is really 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 freaking bloated it has a ton of stuff in it now over half of the stuff that comes from kde thank you kde for continuing to be very very bloated but that's beside the point so i'm a little cautious about actually putting my dot config in my shiny new very clean home directory because this is such a mess i don't know if there's a half and half way i could use it like i could create a brand new config directory and just you know point what applications I want to use towards that. I don't know if that's possible yet. I have something I'll have to look into, but I'm a little weary of putting something that's this messy in my brand new home directory because my home directory, like I said, looks like this and that's the cleanest thing you've ever seen. And I could add some hidden files to there and I probably will because, because I can just, if I need to hide some stuff. Also, if you watch my snap videos, you, you, or you watch my snap video, I should say, you know that I hate the fact that there's a snap directory in my home directory. Well, I don't see that anymore. It's gone. Poof. It's like magic. It's fantastic. So that's what I've done. And like I said, it, it it's only been a day. So there's, it's very well that there could be some pitfall that's, you know, coming up on me real fast and I don't know about it. But so far, this has worked really, really well. And I think that any pitfalls that do come up, I'll be able to work around, you know, fairly easily because I, I should be able to do that anyways. So overall, again, I, I apologize for not knowing the commenter who told me about this trick, but this is brilliance, utter brilliance. And while there are some things that I have to do to kind of work around the traditional workflow, I think I'll get used to those things and I might come up with other tricks as I go along to get past those. And maybe in the comment section below, you guys will have some tricks that I could use to make this even a little bit easier. So this is awesome seriously awesome and all of a sudden my home directory is very clean and that makes me very very happy the uh, yes i know in the back of my mind that the default home directory is still a freaking mess but it was a mess before and i had to look at it every day now i don't have to to look at it it's behind the closet door and it's i'm only going to notice it when i open the closet and get hit in the face with everything that's in there so uh, there's a, <laughs> there's something to picture. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have thoughts, any of this stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also head on over to the store where you'll find desk mats and hoodies and hats and shirts and all sorts of stuff. All that, the proceeds for all that stuff goes to directly help support my content. So thank you very much for everybody who has done that. For the rest of you, head on over to the shop.thelinkscast.org and get yourself some merch. It's all very, very cool. So thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, 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 very much for your support. I truly, again, do appreciate it. And I don't say that enough. Well, I say it as much as I can. Because I say it at the end of every video and I mean it very much every time. So thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. Also, I was very, very worried again. So I take some time off from actually doing videos because I'm way ahead. And every time I come back, I forget how to talk. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.